Napoleon Total War with the Great War mod. So at this point I've jumped ahead quite a bit in time, so it's a late February and we've got snow on the ground. And uh, yes, last time around we took Lemberg and since then I've held Lemberg for quite a while and uh, been able to uh, fully replenish this army, ready for it to move out. We got German army on the way, but one interesting thing about all of this, which I notice now when the snow is on the ground, that the Germans, they suffer casualties even on their own, on their own ground by, um, by the winter. Russia does not. Not even on enemy territory does they suffer attrition, which is strange, uh, very strange. But I guess I guess that's part of it. Um, uh, Russia is immune to the effects of winter, apparently. So some kind of magical beasts. Anyways, my target for the army in Lemberg was actually to move down to Klausenberg and to move through the mountains here rather than go back here. Um, we're gonna have to set up a garrison, most likely defeat this German army, put the garrison in and then move down and capture this. At this point, um, when I'm actually finally ready to move this army up, the Romanians have bolstered this army with elite units and now it's a full stack so it's gonna be really hard to cross that bridge if he thought it was uh, hard at last time. So it's probably going to be a very long battle trying to get across the bridge, a very costly one. But I'm recruiting more troops. And yes. But this time around we're going to do go ahead and play in the north. So what originally I had done was move both of these stacks forward to attack Königsberg. But I had allowed these armies to slip through because I thought they were basically going to die in the snow given that they, it, they were losing so many men as you can see here on their units that they're losing quite a few men. This one has lost over a uh, hundred men so they're losing a lot to winter attrition. But yet they still moved around my armies and went ahead and laid siege here in Latvia and Lithuania, uh, similar with the German army over here. So I had to split the force, but I decided since I was going to attack a town, I was going to focus all my artillery pieces on the attack of Königsberg, and I was going to move this one back with the cavalry, which I'll probably have to dismount, but they will go in and try to save these two towns here. Um, this one has three turns until surrender, this one has two. Um, in two turns we will get another batch of artillery ready to come in so that will be useful but I'm not entirely sure I think I can save one of the towns this one down here hence why I moved there first but I'm not entirely sure I will be able to save this one we've got infantry ready to be recruited here as well at the, ma at the same time we've also been able to build up a new kind of navy and I took out the German navy here which means that I have full control of my trade which was um, bolstered quite a lot so even though I've gone ahead and increased the amount of troops quite a lot and I've built a lot of stuff we can still see that I, I make 23,000 I also have gotten two aircraft so we got a reconnaissance plane right here next to Königsberg and we've put a spy in, in Warsaw, which is now, he can see all of the Polish regions. We can see a lot of troops all over the place and see it through there. And over here, we actually got a bomber plane, uh, which can go ahead and bomb stuff. So it actually has a 50% chance of bombing this. But the thing is, I really want to keep it because the, uh, the field of view, of being able to see what's going on, uh, behind enemy lines is way more important than bombing a single uh, factory so that's that's what we're gonna do there anyways for this one since we cannot actually reach this army this turn um, I'm gonna go ahead and attack Königsberry and uh, we have quite the battle ahead of us so reinforcement army is about 4,000 
uh, and in town we have about 6,000 against our 5,000 men. Now a lot of these are, um, are armed citizenry or, or uh, armed veterans. And the reinforcement army is going to be, be brung up so slowly that I probably will be able to completely destroy it as it enters the field um, before they be become uh, useful. Oh, they have a Sturm Battalion? Uh, it's Grenadiers. So, no submachine guns yet, but... Um, yeah. Seems like they've, they've all suffered some winter attrition, even though they've, they're in town. Um, oh, it is not replenishing. So, even within town... Oh, yeah, no, these guys are not within town. These guys are in town. Um, anyways... Let's go ahead and attack Königsberg. So we didn't, we weren't able to do a Tannenberg because the enemy moved around my armies and I was unable to do that. But at least, hopefully, we'll be able to take this from the enemy and we will keep the enemy then fighting in their own territory and not fighting on Russian soil as it's been up until this point. Anyways, without further ado, let's go ahead and fight the battle, shall we? And so here we are on the field of battle. I've spread out my army along these two lines. So we got a few here situated along the side of the town. Um, with a light infantry unit all the way back here in this forest. Ready to move up through it. Hopefully within cover, because I imagine... It's going to stay in cover because of the forest. It'll be able to sneak up through here and be able to fire into the rear of the enemy. Then we've got most of the units here and these ones are the ones that are going to advance. These guys almost have the range to fire into the enemy. Uh, one thing to note here. Oh, uh, I thought that I actually they were limbered. Uh, or unlimbered I should say but no the enemy artillery is not ready and they're gonna get blown to bits right off the start anyways let's go ahead and start this with a tremendous bombardment of the enemy general as per usual so without further ado let's uh, give them everything we've got and here goes the artillery and let's take a look at the result. Still, quite a few of them survived. We still have five guns out of eight, and 40 people out of 64. Kind of a lot of people strewn out along there. Anyways, let's get these guys to m start to move up towards the enemy. Spread out the lines as long as possible. And start to move towards the enemy. And then we'll get the light infantry as well to start to move up. And now we can see the enemy reinforcement turning up there. We got a little... A little video or a picture of where they were coming from and they're actually coming from right over here which is right in the way of the light infantry so the light infantry is going to get a new task here and it's going to set up ready to ambush the enemy so we got a unit of dragoons moving in and so the light infantry will be set up to focus in on these guys and uh, hit them as they advance. So a massive amount of artillery beam just showering the enemy. And we can see a lot of bodies just strewn out all over the place. So I guess the focus of the battle kind of become this forest. Hopefully though, as these guys advance, more of the enemy army will be discovered. So 
It's one infantry unit down to 44, and then it's one light infantry unit down to 114. Still, the enemy has a lot of artillery, and we're not entirely sure where they are as of yet. Time to hold fire. Okay, so I'm gonna keep looking at what's... Oh, they, they are actually spotted by the enemy. So, go ahead and open fire. I thought they were actually going to be able to stay in cover here for a lot longer than they did. Cavalry is not going to have a, a chance against them in a long drawn out fight. Uh, even though the cavalry will outnumber them. The fact that they're such a m so much bigger target is going to absolutely destroy them. So it looks like these guys are actually going to... Uh, the guard crassier is actually going to try to charge the light infantry together with the dragoons. Oh, a lot of enemy units have been spotted now. Tell the artillery to open fire once more. So they're actually kind of closing in to the point where they are within this distance of the light infantry here. Oh, they're charging. But how many will actually reach the uh, the lines here? And will the light infantry get taken out? So there's 14 of the guard Carazier, and then there's 79 Our men are of running, the dragoons. Sir. Oh, they actually routed the light infantry. So they were able to rout them. But we've got this unit right here most likely is going to be a hard point for the enemy to get around. At the same time, the main battle is underway. Uh, armed veterans forming up. The enemy's got no cover whatsoever. I know they have some interesting units in among these, like pi pioneers or um, those uh, grenadier units, if we can find that, wherever they are. So here's the pioneers. So we've got a unit of pioneers right here. Not entirely sure if what exactly they can do. What the, sort of? I guess maybe they can build some kind of defensive position. Armed citizenry, but they are only armed with knives. It's not going to go well for them, is it? Uh, the cavalry is now firmly in place on these guys' flank and are laying fire into them. The front line is continuing. Oh, we've kind of lost a lot of men from this unit. Not entirely sure how, why they are, have come under such heavy fire. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take these guys and I'm going to swing in like that towards the enemy. And then we're going to keep pushing forward until we reach the point where the enemy is moving in their troops. So the light infantry is back. I'm not going to go ahead and move them. They, because they can fire in, uh, in all around them. They don't just fire through this, uh, this arc. But what I probably want to do is move them uh, towards the forest. Now they're getting fired a lot from this area. Um, these might actually be the Finnish Jaegers, the Finnish light troops that the Germans have. So you know what, I think we're going to focus the art focus in the artillery on these guys. And then the light infantry unit really needs to get away from there. We're going to try to get them into that forest so they're going to retreat. And then we're going to see the disaster that's going to take place once the artillery starts bombarding this area um, with this really thick formation and the uh, the Finnish Jaegers. And the artillery is coming in right behind the uh, the infantry and the Jaegers. And I, it looks like they're actually going to follow the light infantry unit. A 
large part of the enemy force is retreating. It's time to move up the main part of the army. So we're going to move up all the way up here. And it's time to hurry up to move quickly through the snow here to advance on the enemy. And same with the troops that are in the village. They will go ahead and advance at this point, come to the aid of this unit. And let's see, come like they're gonna move at such. Let's see, the light infantry unit is now kind of set up, but um, oh, they're being chased by all these people with n oh, they they are not the knife carrying ones. Um, this light unit needs to get the hell out, so it's gonna head towards the edge of the map, start to run towards there, because there's no way it's gonna survive otherwise. In the meantime, the artillery is constantly bombarding the Finnish Jaegers and the old infantry unit is moving in here. This one seems to be moving in a lot tighter formation than everyone else. Um, not entirely sure why that is, but I'm guessing maybe it's because these guys is a new, uh, new style of infantry that they have recruited. And so the old style keeps in those tighter formations. Uh, not entirely sure how useful it is to continue. You know what? We'll set one to continue harassing these guys. And then the rest of the line. You know what? Now we can actually take an entire line. And we're going to redraw the line right here. And have the men run up. And then I'm going to tell the artillery, hold fire, and then pick targets at your own discretion. Yes, the enemy infantry is in fact uh, chasing the light, the small unit of light infantry that we have. And they're going to continue towards the edge of the map at this point. And just looking at what our artillery and infantry has accomplished, the enemy was caught out in the open and uh, suffered the consequences as of that looking at all the dead bodies here I guess we're advancing a bit too far up ahead because at this point we're actually getting hit by our own artillery I think uh, the enemy artillery unit is just kind of right now getting into position I'm gonna tell these guys to halt just so we can start laying down fire on these guys and push them back so as to um, not have to advance <laughs> all the way up and risk getting utterly destroyed. So the enemy is not far away at this point. They're less than a hundred meters away. But they're all being routed. So we are in this battle, we are winning. So on open field, fields like these, we do have the advantage. It's going to be very difficult, however, when we finally uh, catch up with the Romanian army, which is, um, which is set up on that bridge. It's going to be very difficult to try to defeat them. I'm not entirely sure what the enemy is doing here, but what they might be doing, I haven't taken a closer look. But I think they might be retreating the unit as soon as it's come into onto the map rather than continue it, uh, to move it forwards. But I'm not entirely sure. It might just be that they disappear as soon as they uh, as they come into come into. Uh, yeah, they've just disappeared, so we can't see them. That's why. So it's not that they're at, they've actually uh, gone ahead and retreated, which I thought they were going to. So we're going to continue to push forwards here uh, up until that point over there. And everyone will move as fast as possible. This little unit, you can try to move towards the town. Not entirely sure what our artillery is doing. Oh, they're targeting a few armed citizens that have given up. Artillery, hold your fire. Let's not bring down this town. 
or trying to at least. And then hold the artillery instead for the reinforcement units that are coming in through here. You know what? We might just as well open fire in this area and let the artillery continuously bombard this area. Our infantry is closing up. They're very tired from running this great distance in the snow. They've been running all the way from over there in fighting as they go. Now the Germans, because of our heavy artillery bombardment, has mostly been running away from us and not really fighting back uh, because they're getting destroyed by the artillery. But they've still been fighting as part of, uh, of this as well. The enemy decides not to unlimber their artillery and return fire on us. Instead they slowly just march into um, into utter disaster here and get utterly destroyed. I'm gonna make sure that we don't have to fight these artillery pieces again. Um, so I'm gonna continue to bombard this area and keep shooting them. And there's nothing really here stopping us from advancing even further on the enemy. So we're gonna move up to get closer here on the units that are turning up on the battlefield. And if in case I need to fall back after fighting this, I really want to make sure that we destroy all uh, all enemy units or at least damage them as much as possible um, before I in case we have to fall back to aid the uh, this struggle over in uh, back in our our own country in the uh, in Lithuania and the other and uh, Lithuania and Latvia where the enemy have attacked us And so here we are for the statistics of the battle. We deployed 5,500 men. The enemy lo uh, deployed almost 10,000. Lost 8,000 compared to our 1,600. Uh, 3,800 men remain of our army. While the enemy only has 1,600. Um, and yes, we manage to capture Königsberg, Königsberg as a result of this. And East Prussia is now under our control. I completely cut down at least every unit that was part of this army. I shot down to at least half strength. And they're probably going to lose even more uh, in the winter time. And I capture this. And you can see the replenishment rate is the absolute fastest you can have. It's green. We've got some nice structures keeping us alive. And they were nice enough to have built some really nice structures finance financial sector it's gonna g give us a lot of uh, money and then we've got this uh, small landing strip uh, ready to be holy shit they've got extensive railroad system we only have the basic one but they have managed to upgrade to po uh, the third level of this which means campaign movement rate happiness for all classes Wealth for region and so on. Replenishment rate for rate in this region is 28% increased um, just by that. And then I imagine the military base does a lot as well. So very nice that we managed to capture that. Time to move the plane uh, to be able to see further into Germany. It's kind of crazy how he can just stay in the air indefinitely. But I guess it's supposed to uh, sort of show that you can... I guess he, he comes from the landing field here and he goes over here. So he sees... He goes back and forth. But for for the uh, simplicity of, uh, of this, he's just... Uh, you can only see him doing this like once. For some reason, they've decided to build the Austrian monument. And not the um, 
country specific one. Um, renowned commercial sector. And so forth. Headquarters. What is my specialty? What is my... Have I started building mine, even? Why do I don't have one, apparently? Uh, or is that in Moscow, then? No. Um, don't I have one of those? Or did I just... Do I need to tear down a building? Maybe I'd need to tear down something to build that. I think these are instead of forts. I'm not entirely sure. Um, I guess maybe I could save, delete the building and check to see if I, I'm missing something like that. Anyways, we're going to go ahead and enter and see if I have any time left to actually conduct this battle as well. Uh, so I'll, I'll see you after uh, ending turn. So, turns out there wasn't that much more time left on this episode, so I'm going to cram this small little battle. We're probably not going to see all of it, but uh, you're going to see the, m the gist of it. And yeah, let's go ahead and play this one. Right, and so here we are on the field of battle. One thing that will be interesting with this battle is I will not have any artillery. Instead, I will have tons and tons upon cavalry. And so we'll have, at some point during the battle, a massive cavalry charge going against the enemy line. But first, I will probably move up infantry, uh, but try to focus them in. Uh, we're going to actually move these guys. Um, and try to focus them in on the flank as so uh, we the enemy fire coming at us is not going to is sort of um, uh, continue on into the cavalry. I'm actually going to move the general as well. I thought it would be an in cool to have him right in front of the unit. But since he's always visible, that could cause artillery to start shelling my cavalry position and destroy them before they even have a chance to attack. So uh, uh, we're not going to allow that. Right, let's go ahead and start the battle. Starting off by telling the infantry to advance upon the enemy position. And we're going to try to get the enemy to focus in on this side. So I'm going to tell these guys to start running and get up on this hill ready to uh, attack these guys as soon as possible. The enemy artillery is uh, unlimbering. These guys still hidden, but the my general is visible. Hopefully the enemy, however, will focus in. Yes, they are focusing in on this side, which means we need to adopt a spread out posture and then we will gain a very cover a very huge amount of ground by setting up right here so start moving as fast as possible we're not going to be as easy of a target as the enemy usually allows um, allows their troops to become and hopefully this will focus in tons of the enemy infantry and stuff moving in towards these guys that have newly been spotted. Uh, the rest of my infantry is slowly advancing on this side, um, but staying, uh, staying out of view. And we can see these guys actually moving on an angle. I think I'm actually going to stop my infantry here. From going any further at this point. Oh, and hold fire! Crap. Go ahead, disappear again. Disappear, stupid infantry. Yes. <laughs> um, right, so the <laughs> enemy. That was close. Um, the enemy does not know we're coming there. They saw us for a second or two, but then we disappeared. So I was afraid if I advanced further that the enemy will, would have spotted us. Um, so we're going to continue now. going to continue like this. So keep moving. And we'll see how far we get through there. Uh, these guys, unfortunately, is probably going to have to hold for quite a while before I actually unleash the cavalry. Because I want to focus in 
all the enemy as much as possible right here. And as we see, they're in a perfect kind of angle to have the cavalry come in from the side and uh, attack them in air uh, right through the side here. And you know what? It looks like this is a good opportunity to do this. I'm gonna get these guys into a group and then we're gonna start to tell them to advance here. Uh, the enemy is really close over here. So at this point, like right over here. Come on, shoot then. Oh, and you missed, you idiot. Right, so the cavalry is now starting to move. This massive cavalry movement going through the forest. And just waiting a bit until I unleash the cavalry attack. Oh, the enemy is releasing a cavalry attack on their own on our flank here. Uh, they're bombarding the, the flank though. A lot of the infantry is even broke, uh, breaking up as they're engaged here in melee fighting. Uh, uh, you know what? This is the perfect time. Full speed ahead, cavalry. Oh, so the first unit's getting hit. I'm gonna release the group and I'm gonna tell everyone to charge forwards against this unit. So the Finnish Jaegers, I think it's a Finnish Jaeger unit. Our men are running, sir. God damn it, I, I tell you to charge at full speed. Charge! Oh, I kind of did not release them out of there. No, now they're out of the group. So here comes the cavalry. Full speed ahead into the German army, and they're going to continue right through towards that regiment over there. I'm going to take units here in the back, and I'm going to peel them off. And I'm going to send them off to either side here to attack these troops and also attack get the cannons on the flanks our men are running so massive cavalry charge here going through get continue the cavalry charge straight forwards now this infantry all this infantry is going to move start running get into these positions cannons rolling up the artillery I mean the uh, cavalry rolling up the artillery. These guys continuing forwards, um, attacking these. Reinforcements, I didn't know I had reinforcements coming in. Glorious victory, sir. Cavalry it's units, to be yours. let's focus in. We've got a really small unit there. There's no point in focusing in on that. Most enemy units have been destroyed. I want the cavalry now focusing in over there. So we didn't actually lose that many. That many cavalry troops. Or I well the first one coming out of the forest got absolutely massacred down to like 13 uh, horsemen. Um, but the rest of the cavalry was able to sweep in. I'm not entirely sure how many they were actually able to kill on their own and how many was actually due to uh, the fire. It's going to be interesting to see on the, on the, in the statistics how well the, the cavalry did. Um, but yeah, it, it was pretty interesting. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to go in closely to check out the battle, but it's probably going to make for one hell of a um, one hell of a, uh, a screenshot to put at the thumbnail. Anyways, we've won the battle, close victory. Okay, so here we are for the statistics. We lost uh, two thousand men out of uh, eight thousand. The enemy lost more or less his entire army. Only 169 survived, so most likely the army is destroyed. Highest kills goes to the infantry. But then we have the Gosari, which I imagine is the cavalry. 
if I'm not entirely mistaken. And as we can see here, they didn't actually cause that many kills. 138, 88, 83. So it was really down to those infantry, those four infantry units that actually moved up and took the fight. The cavalry performed not very good at all. These guys lost 200 men, 35 remaining, and they got the highest kill, which was 135, which that's not a very good uh, statistics for that kind of thing. So, um, yeah, cavalry is probably not... They survived? God damn it! Well, we'll follow them then. And then out to resolve and destroy them. And the general got a train. Steady on the fire. And then we'll move as soon as possible. Trying to get over to this side. What I've done is I've moved these guys up. Which will newly recruited from Riga. Uh, to the bridge to hold there. This one has two turns left. And then I've moved. I, I've left some men to defend our newly conquered Königsberg. And then I've moved the army. To try to get here to aid. Maybe take out this army. Maybe take out this one. Our fleet was forced out of the port. I had a Obligeni unit, but that was destroyed by an entire full stack German army that came in and destroyed that little force. And so my fleet is now uh, uh, out on the high seas, as it were. C hardly called the Baltics high seas, but um, we've got more ships coming in, so at some point I'll send these guys away, maybe get some more. Um, or at least the cargo ships needs to go away and get some more ivory from Africa. Get some of that good cash. Uh, the populace here is very unhappy. We're going to not tax them then to make sure that they, uh, they do not revolt against us. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. And hopefully, I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!